welcome back. It's been a while. Uh, sorry for not uploading lately. I've just been busy with life in general. And uh, same with Steve. Steve's been very busy. I wasn't busy at all, Alex. Actually, I was waiting on you the entire time to film. But other than that, oh. uh, moved across the country. That was fun. Uh, spent a month in Florida while I was waiting for my house. So yeah, I've been pretty busy too. And uh, I'm about like 95% unpacked. So starting to get a little settled in. Yeah. Even Have you been so doing good though or what? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> I'm not, not compared to last year. That's for sure. Uh, the Panthers got you feeling that way or just life? <laughs> uh, no, life's, life's, life's been good. Life's been good. Mm. I mean, I saw you at the game. That's what matters. You yep. Your guns back. We got to meet. And if you want to show the picture now, you can. We'll see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or it'll be the thumbnail. Yeah, make it the thumbnail. Yeah, make it the thumbnail. Um, <laughs> I I guess before we start getting to the topics, I want to talk to you, the people watching the video, to comment down any questions you would like to, to answer in the next video. I think that'd be a really fun segment to have. And we can just answer your questions. That could be hockey or personal or just like hockey history questions, anything you got. Yeah, any any team, even uh, my future college team. <laughs> so since we haven't really talked about it since, what, that Buffalo, our eighth game, uh, let's talk about the Panthers, eh? Has it been that long? I think that was the last video. It's been long. I didn't know it was like the eighth game of the season. Yeah, now we're down to, what, the 30th? It's Something been like long that, yeah. but short, like, you know? Still feels like the beginning of the season, but we're a third of the way there. I feel like we haven't gotten any points since the eighth game of the season. Barely. A super slow climb, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. You want to kick us off? We'll, we'll start with positives. Yeah, let's start with what's what have been some positives for you thus far. Um, I think a positive, and I don't think anyone's going to argue with me on this one, but I think uh, Matthew Kachuk has been a great positive to this team. He's been bringing a lot of energy. He's been bringing a lot of goals, a lot of points, and he stepped in and defended teammates when needed, right? Like just the other day, he defends an AHL player who got hit rough right against the boards, and then he jumps in there and starts fighting them. Um, I got that good fight with Mason Montour. Or no, <laughs> Mason Montour? Mason <laughs> Marchment. I got the fight with him and Mason Marchment. I posted it on Twitter where I'm recording uh, Kachuk fighting him. And then all of a sudden I hear a beat to my left. I literally look left and there's like Stanley Panther right there. You had something you wanted to say about Stanley Panther, didn't you? Oh my God. For me, I feel like Stanley, in terms of going to the game, Stanley's there for the first half, especially when there's a heavy away crowd like last night. Yeah, last night against the Penguins. Stanley's not there to beat them out. Like to uh, when they're chanting, let's go pens. He's not there to beat the drums, try to get rid of the noise. He's just like gone. Yeah. My friend uh, Kirby and Cody from Spaces and I talked about this last night. So um, being on the West Coast, being in New Mexico and Las Vegas for the last 10 years, uh, I watched a lot of the Panthers at, you know, four o'clock my time. And then, you know, as soon as they were dead or the game was done, uh, we would go to the West Coast games, which would be like normal time for me. And it'd be like midnight for everyone else. And I would watch the Flames a lot. That's how I became a Matthew Chuck fan, because I saw how much of a little crap he was and how much of an instigator and a little bully and how good he was at hockey. So I used to always turn on flame games. I asked Kirby and uh, Cody about this in spaces. And from my perspective, I feel like this is not the same player that we got from Calgary. However, I do think it may be a little bit better. So my expectations for Kachuk coming into the season were literally skate on the ice, blow everyone up, just like Ryan Lomberg does usually, and then just score a million goals and that's it. He's been way more disciplined here in Florida, despite his penalty minutes. I think it could be worse. I think he's choosing he, – he understands how important he is to this roster, and he's choosing his moments when to be a little shit instead of just always being a little shit. Because I heard he got a lot of criticism for costing the Oilers series last year in the playoffs because he couldn't control his emotions. So I think he's starting to realize how important he is, and he's, he's throttling back a little bit, but he's, he's still there. I feel like, yeah, to go with that, his he matured when he went to Florida. Obviously, he's a year older. It's a different team, a new slate, new fan base, new everything. And uh, he, one thing I noticed is that he automatically got that A when he first came out in the in the of the Panther season. Do you think he deserves it? As yeah, for sure. Right now, that's fair. I mean, I, I would yeah. kind of agree with that logic, but. 
Um, I joked in spaces about stripping Barkov C and they were all going into like the C means nothing, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, it's no, it's more of the message of stripping the C, the action of doing it, the saying you're not a captain. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, I said, uh, I said like, well, they should just make it Chuck the captain and everyone like lost a fit. Like I was like half trolling there, but everyone lost a fit and they were like, you don't make a first year player the C and I'm like, who gives a shit? Just do it. Oh, you're so like cats chasing each other in the background. Cool. So what, what do you got for positives, Alex? I really like the call-ups from the Charlotte. Um, Tyranny, now he's injured. Pepo Niemi, Dennis Sanko. Dennis Sanko Azori hasn't scored too much goals. He created some well good some good offense. I really like Zach Dolphy. I felt like he's been pretty good, even though he's on the second line for some reason. I like him, but he's really old. It's very surprisingly old. <laughs> and then Kirsten, I felt has done nothing too wrong and you're the defenseman guy so you can probably uh his minutes were limited i believe when he first got, got called up but the thing with kirstead is i'm not noticing mistakes but i'm not really seeing the superstar defensive plays which is good that's all that's all we're asking yeah. from our bottom four we're not asking you to put the entire game on your back um is that all you got for call-ups yeah this is so, brief Talking about positive defenders, who would have thought I'd be sitting in this chair talking about money bag Montour? Holy crap, this kid this year is killing it. There are a couple elements to his game that I think he's vastly improved on that he was not doing last year. Last year, he was indecisive. This year, I feel like he's a little bit more decisive with context. We'll talk about the power play. Uh, he's a lot more physical, so he's kind of stepping into that role, that mold that I kind of had like Weger in, in terms of like how he gets the puck. He uses the body to separate the player, the stick, and the puck. He kind of like puts himself in between, and then he takes the puck that way. Um, and I had another point, but I can't quite remember it. Um, his offensive production has been great, and his dis- decision making has been great this season, minus the power play. We'll talk. He's about been a- He's been a best offensive defenseman. I saw this one stat that showed him very eerily similar to prime Keith Yandel. <laughs> him and him and Gudis have had shockingly good years for yeah. what the expectations were. I the expectations thought, were not them two as our best. Yeah, I thought they were going to regress, if anything. So what I, do you else you got? Spencer Knight season. I mean, wow. Talk about a guy who really, at least in terms of maybe recency bias, might have something to do with it, but really took the starter's job from Sergei Bavrovsky. I got my own uh, inputs on on that. Um, granted, I'm not a goalie coach. I'm not an NHL coach. Just from an eyeball perspective, it feels like when you give Bobrovsky eight games, you give him five games, you give him four games, you like give him. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Uh, when you have Bobrovsky playing all those games together, I feel like he really – really locks down the net and then yeah. once you once you play him like once or twice and then play spencer knight once or twice and give spencer that game that fifth game that Bobrovsky comes in is like complete and utter crap yeah and i feel like that's where he's struggling um but overall knight has been better uh i still don't trust the dude to leave his his goal if you're a goaltender tend the goal like <laughs> my so guy scary. <laughs> uh so let's let's quickly go into negatives so uh, for negatives, I have Aaron Ekblad. So in our preview video for this season, I said one of the big three is going to get uh, called out, essentially, like being a fraud, right? I don't think that Forsling, Ekblad, or Monter will all have great seasons. I feel like Forsling has been both good and bad, so like we'll just call him average. Monter's had a great season, and Ekblad has had an utter nightmare. Disgusting. Um, you, you can just tell his confidence is shot. What do you think? Easily. I mean, don't flame me. Carry flames. Uh he hasn't been this good. He hasn't he's like playing how he was when he wasn't with Uyghur two three two or three years ago. Bad defensively and some good upside offensively. I he, make the argument all the time on spaces, and I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this. That I don't think Ekblad was ever that guy to get a puck defensively. He's like a defender who was only, you know, offensive. Right. Yeah. I mean, hence the puck movie defenseman, the offensive defender. I, I, I get the titles, but I never felt like he was the guy to like block a shot, to like take the puck away. And I feel like he's kind of coasted these last three seasons 
but he gets those Norris votes because of those goals he scores. And if he's not scoring those goals, then he's not, then you can see his defensive flaws as well as you could see, you cannot see his offensive upside. Yeah, he's more like a Quinn Hughes, less like a Victor Hedman. All right, what do you got for negatives? Uh, the power play. Uh, not good. Shades of goodness. Shades of greatness, Uh, but no. Yeah. Between that, the injuries and just the setup, and the, even sometimes just the entrance has not been good at all. It's very on and off, you know. Um, It's just inconsistent. And speaking of inconsistency, do you think anyone else has been inconsistent this year? Mm, the starts with 2G, starts with G. Goten. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say Barkov. Yeah, Barkov Barkov has been inconsistent. <laughs> sure, he has disclaimer, he does have, he had dealt with pneumonia. Can't say it. And pneumonia? Pneumonia, yeah. Yeah, pneumonia. What'd you pneumonia. say? Pneumonia. It's not pneumonia. There's I think it is spelled with a P, isn't it? I don't yeah. know, dude. I'm not <laughs> I'm not in school anymore. Don't ask me. Yeah. But so, surely he totally shut that. Way. So if people yeah. say like you, you you have it, it lingers there for a little bit, but I mean he's going on like what three or four games back. Yeah. He should have already shook it. Plus he's been he's been inconsistent all year, even before the pneumonia. Yeah. So I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I feel like he's not um, as clutch as Matthew Kachuk. That's for sure. Let's uh talk about some things that, to watch out for. These are just things to watch. All right. They're not positive, they're not negative. Forsley, I would like to see him bounce back, and I would like to see him be a lot more consistent and Less mistake heavy, if that makes sense. Um, so just keep an eye on him. What do you got? Uh, to do Claire Cap situation, we saw him practicing the one timers from George Richards. He's getting there. Did that... you fancy that that video? I mean, I don't, I'm just watching a pro NHL player shoot at an empty net, and I'm just not impressed. No, but it shows that he's back. <laughs> It does show he's back, but everyone's hyping up his one time. I'm like, there's not even a goalie in the net. Put someone in the damn net and do it, and then I'll be impressed. Yeah. All right. Um, something I got is uh, Mahura. Just keep an eye on Mahura. Uh, he's been so- he's been solid all year long, not really contributing to mistakes, contributing offensively, which is what you would love to see. However, there have been little little tidbits of inconsistency in terms of uh, – giving up the puck yeah. and in dangerous situations. Like just last game, he, he passed to Aaron Ekblad. Aaron Ekblad didn't settle it. You know, you can blame Ekblad. You can blame Mahura for passing to Ekblad because that was stupid. Yeah. So why would you want to do that? I, uh, I liked him so far. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a good pickup, but just something to watch. Like, let's just keep yeah. our eye on him. Exactly. All right, what do you got for uh, your last negative or what to watch? Excuse uh, me. The – the closeness between Carter Hagee and Sam Bennett penalty. Sure, it's five penalty difference, but I feel like Sam Bennett gets way more hate for taking stupid penalties than Carter Hagee, and he takes just as much. Or takes he, he definitely death. does, but you, you can't be angry at our Lord and Savior. He got us yes, to the yeah. Capitals. No, so. I'm not, no, I'm just saying, I feel like people, they're harsh on Bennett a little too much. Um, He definitely needs to double his penalties for <laughs> Carter Hagee to get called out. Yeah. All right. So let's let's wrap this up here because we don't want to be too long. Yeah. So we have a fun round. It's called Quick Fire, Quick Thoughts. One minute. So you can just basically just give like a sentence. You can give a word up to a sentence, right? And it's just like the first thing that pops in your mind. Uh, you so what do you got for Paul Maurice? Uh, fire him, but not yet. Give him time. Not going to make it. Mm. All right. What do you got for reverse retros? Beautiful. We wear them way too much. Dude, I sort of got every time I turn on a game, I see the damn reverse retros. I'm like, oh, okay. Guess we're wearing them every game now. Sam Reinhart. Power play machine. Give him time. He's slowly getting back into the things. Uh, Bobrovsky. Solid as of recently. As of recently. I mean, solid that's, recently. Solid that's recently. my quick my quick thought is, is recently. <laughs> yeah. All right. What do you got for uh, face-offs? Sucks. <laughs> yeah. What do you got for Huberto? Who? Huberto. Who? Huberto. Who? <laughs> I got uh, passing on breakaways. Where have I seen that before? Oh, yeah. We have two of them. Mm. Away fans. What do you think? Too much of them. They are obnoxious. They're all on club level. And they just don't shut up and they're completely loud. Yeah, I get it's a hockey game. I'm not trying to kill the vibes, but Jesus, dude. Some of them are obnoxious. And my last question for you is why are you Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. 
We're back and just in time for our last quick fire, quick thoughts question, which isn't so quick anymore because you have time to think about it. So my question for you is, what are your thoughts on the jersey you're wearing and the jersey behind you? They're great. I mean, look, uh, it's the old time Ducks jerseys. I don't have an away jersey, quote unquote away or white jersey. That's more than a sentence, Alex. Oh, my bad. My sentence is disgraceful. I'm over I here see. actually repping Panther gear for once, and you're over here wearing a Dutch jersey and a freaking college uniform in the background. Like, come on, dude. Um, I don't know. Kind of a dard. One of these teams are getting it. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you should get them on both of them. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, that ends the quick fire, quick thoughts. Um, and let's talk about one last thing. So you guys didn't think we would just skim over this, but what are your thoughts on Paul Maurice a little bit more extensively? He's barely above 500, and we're 30 games into the season. Get it, new coach. Get it, new systems. But then again, I always question the idea of why did we hire Maurice? Why couldn't we just keep Brunette? Why couldn't we just hire Bruce Just for playoff hockey, no? Is that not the answer? Yeah, but you have to get into the playoffs first. Do me a favor, Alex. Take the term playoff hockey and define it to me. What the hell does playoff hockey mean? Oh my, I have this conversation with my dad every single time because they always bring up on the Bally Sports announcement. Paul Maurice is bringing that playoff hockey style into the game. And the playoff hockey style is what? Blowing 4-1 leads to St. Louis Blues? What, what is the real term? Not what Paul Maurice is doing. A real term of playoff hockey is just tight check. King. A, a tight game, right? Playing yeah. a close game, a one goal game and not blowing it. Is yeah. that That's what it's supposed to mean? Because that's not what we've done all year. So No. Interesting. <laughs> it's not been what is advertised that's for sure i feel like he gets he gets this season and then he's gone i don't think he i don't think he comes back for next year um i don't think i don't quite think bill zito trusts him but i'm not bill zito so if bill zito trusts him and he's like yeah uh let's take this 15 mil cap space here you go have fun with paul maurice god knows where we'll be next year I am under the mindset that I'm not going to fully blame Paul Maurice, though. Right? Yeah. It's so players, I, I understand that, you know, the first quarter of the season we had, um, we had Barkov and Sam Reinhardt just literally AFK on the ice, not contributing at all. Like, I think both of them had like some like two points total between both of them for like the first like few games. Like that's disgusting of who are supposed to be two of your, you know, top three forwards. Right. Yeah. So you had that, and then in the middle of the season, we kind of had the goalie coin flip of just like, you know, like we win this game. If 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 Knight or Bob give us an average shift, like we win this game, but they just both would have like nightmare games where, you know, we would shoot it from the blue – they would shoot it from the blue line at one mile per hour, and all of a sudden, like, you know, Bob or Knight can't track like a one mile per hour puck literally going like this, and it just goes in the net. That That's how bad it felt sometimes. And then the third reason – um, it was like the injuries last like recent last quarter has been injuries and I don't think Paul's doing himself any favor with his comments what are your thoughts on that where it's he's just like blaming pretty people pretty pathetic comments in my opinion like what we didn't we, Matthew Kachuk's our best player well duh but then again Colorado Avalanche are winning games without Landis Cog without McKinnon without Lekonen I mean you're talking about some of their high-end forwards and we're missing one guy one main guy to be fair, we have been missing Markov all season. Well, he's just been invisible, but. <laughs> so we're missing him. Got it. All right. Um. Well, that's all I got on Mochizi. You got anything else? Uh, We had so much better options. It's just sad to see what could have been. I, I hear fans like fantasizing about uh, firing him and then hiring Barry Trotz. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. <sighs> I, I don't know. I, if, mm, yeah, I wish we just kept Burnett. We could have. We're, we're a young team. Why can't you grow with your co- coach? Mm, I don't know. Look at the New Jersey Devils right now. Oh, shut up. I don't. You think Lindy Ruff changed anything? Lindy hear me Ruff out. is an hear old duck out. coach. Weren't like the rumors were like he didn't do anything. He just took Q's system and ran with it. Yeah, so no. when they started shutting us out of the blue line for exits and entries into the zone, like he just did not adapt. And then he did not save the power play. He was the power play coach and he did not save the power play. We have so to it's have like, one. 
I, I just yeah. I just don't know how creative Andrew Burnett would have been, you know, with his own system rather than just stealing Q's homework for like the next five years. Yeah. I mean, granted, would he probably have learned maybe? But I mean, I mean uh, how much of that New Jersey system do you think is Andrew Burnett? A big chunk because the New Jersey Devils did not play like this last year. They're quick running gun style. They're high scoring games. Did they hire a new head coach? No, it's been Lindy Ruff, one of the oldest coaches. Like in terms of like lunch it, lunch it. Yeah. 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 But then their young guns got in a year older as well. Yeah, but we also have a pretty good team too. So yeah. I heard stylistically they play very similar to the Panthers of last year. And I think that's where people are drawing to those conclusions from. Makes sense. All right. Yeah, any questions for uh the fans in the comments down below? Uh go to the games, please. That's not a question. Here, I got a question. Guys, what do you think about Paul Maurice? Let us know in the comments down below. Yes. And that, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have, of, we're gonna have the Q&A. We're going to have this. We're going to have, like, Steve, get off this channel. And then we're going to have, like, fire. <laughs> go, go to the college already. Steve, get off this channel is not a question. You have to ask it in a question format. Like, uh -huh. Steve, would you please leave this channel? please like that would be a question they'd be like okay yeah i could, I could leave on well, my bad <laughs> all right also, cool yeah get a better name for the arena please awesome i feel like that arena is not a good name it's funny with the people that mention our attendance but it's like if you actually look at the numbers it's, it's like we yeah yeah so like um like just for an example like winnipeg last game did uh, 14,000 and they were like 90 to 95 percent capacity we did like 14,000 like 800 and we were like 75 percent capacity it's a big arena all, yeah so like that. i think arena size has something to do with the percentage but the overall numbers i mean it was basically the same as winnipeg yeah and then again i don't know now you look at tampa's numbers are 100 percent, and they're the same they're, no one wants to talk winning about teams. those rats nobody yeah. wants to talk about them move on your favorite player? Do you hear? Do you know Jack Edwards, the Bruins announcer? Yes, I hate him. You heard about his comments about uh, the the big rig? Favorite no. Line? What do you What do you say about? He Pat basically Pat. wanted this giant fat Pat. He basically wanted this giant rant, something like this oh, guy yeah. clocked in at two hundred and thirty five pounds, and he probably had a couple pizzas in the way in or something like that. You know, oh, he called him fat. Yeah, and then what? What he what? Uh, Maroon did was like he donated like fifty uh, good amount of money to like mental health for like eating disorders, <laughs> and he raised like a lot of money for that. I think, uh, I think when you take the game in the sh in a shell and you you take name tags off and you all wear white and black jerseys and you can't tell what team's which team and there's no history behind it. Um, I think Pat Maroon will go down as one of the most underrated players of all time with like how smart he is and how well he plays and like how much he does, how much he does off the puck as well as like his decision-making. I like, I would love to have a player like that in, in the Panthers, but um, since he is a lightning player, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be rooting for him. Mason Marchman. He's was that guy. He was uh, so good on and off the, I really wish we had him. I don't think Mason Marshman was as smart of a player as Pat Maroon. And it's funny because Pat Maroon is known as like the dumbest player in the NHL. Like as like a meme. But like he he his decision making, his decisions to go for four checks, when to pinch, when to make contact, when to just let a play drop, or like all at an extremely high level. And it shows because he's, he's, he's a three time champion. He's like Matthew Kachuk if Matthew Kachuk had no skill. Yeah, yeah, I would I would argue that. It, take the skill out of Matthew Kachuk and and add some muscle. It's very it's very close because neither Matthew Kachuk nor Pat Maroon are like amazing skaters. They yeah. just have to play smarter. I would agree with that. Yeah. I don't what happens if you take Barkov's skill out of him? What does he become? His skill out? Like his actual like skating ability and like his stick handle oh, and all that stuff. You have literally nothing. Probably like uh, do you, you know what? All right. My apologies. Barkov got into one fight since our last video. I'll give him credit. He's yeah, not, that was fun. He's not a pussy anymore. It's because I think what, wasn't it because of Carter Verhage? Carter yeah, Car I think Carter Verhage got kind of like half boarded. He got shoved into the boards at first, and like Barkov actually showed emotion for once. Thank Barkov you, Barkov. Cares about three guys only: Gudis. They always have the little high five thing at the end. His son. Did you see that video? Yeah. Did you see that video where he like so high five the ghost? Yeah, that was so it. sad. <laughs> He has some Lundell and then Carter Verhage. 
when that game and none none that game where none of those three guys played that must have been so sad for him because they're always guys uh he doesn't like uh, uh, Luce Ryan? i don't know isn't he finished as well yeah he's finished like, but like then you can say the same as hep on Niami or like it does as a fence yeah barkov should learn english he's been here long enough he anyway does. that's all i got no he doesn't he does not speak english Brian Lomberg? Let's talk about him. He was fun. Do you know, I want to talk about that BS uh, five minute major? And there's no yes. It was pretty. Uh, he retaliated. So did, did the ever, other guy. Did you ever watch Shorzy? Yeah. Well, the the, the clips, some clips, yeah. The the distribution of the penalties at the end was kind of like bullshit. It was like semantics. I I agree with that. However, like I mean, he did board him. Yeah, but there's also <laughs> no suspension for that. Do you remember um, in Shorzy, it was like one of the first uh, episodes where he's like yelling at the teenager. The teenagers are yelling at him. And he's like, I don't, I don't, uh, they never call the initial penalty. They only call the retaliation. It's literally what they did in that play. Yeah. They, they did call the initial penalty, but because of the retaliation, you know, Ryan Lombard was punished. But I did see a, pan- I saw a Panther Shorzy jersey. Like I had Shorzy in the back and then 69. <laughs> I love Shorzy. Uh, I hope they make a season two. I don't know anything about that. It's not talked about a lot in the hockey community, it seems. The Shorzy? Yeah. I think it's because it's a Canadian show. Oh, maybe. Because Letterkenny is pretty popular among Americans, at least in the military. Like, um, saying Ferda, like, if, if I walked into my workplace and I screamed Ferda, like, a lot of people would know what I was talking about. They'd be like, Ferda boys! Um, but like if I reference Shorzy, they don't really know what I'm talking about. Unless like I reference the Shorzy line in Letterkenny, which is kind of like two different characters. But anyway, why are we talking about this right now? Because <laughs> we, we had we had extra time because of the double zoom reading. I felt so rushed. It was like that final 10 <laughs> minutes. Anyway, <It's> <laughs> I, I, I bet you you, the audience, are loving our little conversation. So I guess, yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm hoping to make more videos. I will. I have a lot of time now. And uh, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to follow the social medias in the link. And like in the description thing. Adios. (laughs)